just to let you know, um, while we are waiting for people, uh, we are going to record this session. Uh, please feel free to keep your cameras on if you want to. We'd like to see your lovely faces, but you can switch them off if you prefer. It won't be recording you. It will just be recording uh, the people who are speaking. So don't worry about that. Um, and secondly, if we could just ask you, please, to keep yourselves muted just while we're, we are talking, just because it stops any feedback or any kind of interruptions over, over that. But otherwise, uh, Good evening to everyone. Lovely to see you. It's nice to see people with their cameras on. It's nice to see people sort of waving and saying hello. Uh, so that is fantastic. I'm just going to wait for people to mute themselves. And we'll start. Thank you. Uh, Hi everyone, uh, I'm Laura Stanley. If we haven't met before, I am the Pathways and Progress Leader at Aquin Burley. Um, I'm gonna be just sort of uh, leading you through the presentation this evening. We're here to talk about year 12 and to welcome you all as parents of year 12s to Aquin Burley and to the SWAP. Uh, we're also joined by the rest of the six, or most of the rest of the sixth form team who will say hello to you in a second when I introduce them. Um, uh, just another point of housekeeping, uh, we are going to talk to you, uh, we're going to talk through a PowerPoint. This PowerPoint will be available on the website afterwards, so don't feel you have to take loads of notes or anything like that. Uh, but if you do have any questions at any point during uh, the session, can you please type them in the chat box? If you're not sure where it is, if you hover your cursor over the screen, uh, then a bar will come up at the bottom of the screen and there, there's a little chat bubble that says chat next to it. If you click on that, it should appear at the right hand side of your your screen and you can uh, type your questions in there. Uh, we will then answer those questions at the end or uh, at, at a sensible point during, uh, during the session. Great. So thank you uh, very much for joining us. Um, I'm just going to introduce us before as we start off. Um, I've already introduced myself, but I'm sort of third down on here. You can find me, Laura Stanley. Uh, we've also got uh, Anna Rimington, who's the director of Key Stage 5 with us this evening. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name's Anna Rimington. I'm, I'm the director of learning for Key Stage 5, which means that I'm the head of the sixth form. Um, I'm your port of call for um, kind of all matters to do with the sixth form. If it's not me that can immediately answer your query, I will direct you to another member of our team. Um, I did just want to say as well that um, Nick John, our head teacher, is um, on our Zoom today. Um, Nick, I didn't know if you wanted to say something, um, but if you do want to say something, then that's absolutely fine. Um, so welcome and um, it's lovely to see everyone but I'll, I'll hand over to you Anna. <laughs> yeah I just knew you'd be there and I didn't know how long we had you for so uh, for those of you who don't know Nick, Nick's the head teacher of Ackland Burley um, so uh, obviously some of you will know him from being parents at Ackland Burley and, men, and uh, lots of uh, the rest of you may not know him so it's really nice to uh, have Nick there as well. Thanks a lot Nick. Thanks, Laura. Back to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, we also have Ron with us, who is the year team leader for 12 and 13. Hello, everyone. I'm Ron Stokes. I'm head of year 12 and 13 um, at Ackland Burley School. I have a general um, overview of all the students in 12 and 13. Line manage the, um, the tutors um, and uh, I'll speak a little bit more about what the tutors uh, do in a minute. So if you've got any queries, please, please get in touch. And it's really, really good to see you all this evening. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Um, I've already introduced myself a little bit. Um, I'm one of the Progress and Pathways leaders. I'm mainly responsible for UCAS, for HE, for progression, uh, post-18, things to do with apprenticeships and generally anything that our students do once they leave sixth form. Um, and I also uh, work around things like super curricula um, and those kind of aspects of, uh, of students' uh, life in the sixth form. Um, we also have Michael with us, who's a Progress and Pathways leader. Hi everyone, my name is Michael Liu. <laughs> I'm also a Progress and Pathway Lead. Um, my role, what differs from Laura is that I'm actually based on site, so therefore um, students have access to me throughout the day. Um, I mainly cover um, attendance, academic support, but also on the pastoral side of things in which I'll, I'll delve into later as well. Uh, thanks, Laura. 
Thank you. And we don't have Linda, we're not lucky enough to have Linda here with us this evening, but a really, really important part of our team is Linda Lyons, who's our sixth form administrator. She is the person that you will speak to if you call up with, uh, if, if a student is absent. She does lots and lots of work around absence, around bursary, um, and all the things that kind of keep us running in the, in the sixth form, really. Anna. Hi everyone, so um, we've just put this slide up just to show you, and again for ex and Burley students, um, parents, that will all be perhaps quite familiar to you, but we just wanted to make the point that um, your child's made a really great choice um, about sixth form and coming to La Swap, and that the four schools um, that make up La Swap are shown in the um, infographic uh, map here. So we're there at Burley, and then the other three schools, La Santa Union, William Ellis and Parliament Hill are very, very close by. Um, so do make do make sure that you know the schools that um, your child has lessons at. Um, most students will have lessons in more than one school, but not not all. Um, our BTEC students um, remain with us and generally are, are taught predominantly at um, at, at Clumberley. I would also make the point that the schools are very, very close together. So actually getting around and navigating um, around the schools is, re is really, really easy. No, George, thanks. The other thing, thing to point out is that next to, between Parliament Hill School and William Ellis is the La Swap building and the La Swap office. Um, and all kind of matters of La Swap admin come from the office there. Um, so we have our own administrative um, organisations, obviously, in all the four schools, but the, the central building is um, the La Swap building, which is between part of Parliament Hill School. It's the building, if you know that part of Highgate Road, it's got the kind of living wall um, outside it. Thank you. Okay, so um, the first thing that we would just want to go through with you at the beginning is a kind of aspiration, really, for who are sixth forms, who, who they are, who we want them to be by the time they leave here. Um, your, your children have made a really, really positive start in year 12. We are absolutely delighted with our, with our cohort, um, especially about how adaptable they are being to the arrangements that we've made. Obviously things, not just in the sixth form, but um, with all students coming back to school have been um, changeable, haven't they? Um, and we've all had to adapt to new systems. So I'm delighted about the way that year 12 have proved themselves so adaptable. We want our students to be independent, independent reflective learners who achieve well, that's why you're sending them to us and we will support them to do that. We also want them to give them lots of opportunities and choice. And this is a point I made with them in my first assembly with them about sixth form is a time to really try and grab opportunities and make the most of the opportunities that are offered to you. Now that might be university, apprenticeships, work experience and so on. We want students who feel a part and contribute to our school community. And of course, we want your, your children when they're with us to be um, happy. We want them to be mature, happy young adults prepared for their future pathways. And really everything that we do over the next two years is focused on their future pathways and the best possible chance of getting them where they want to be. And where do they actually go? Well, here is where um, our students, so our last year 13 who, uh, who finished this summer, this is where they, where they went this year. Um, the vast majority of our year 13s, as you can see, do go on to university into a huge, huge range of degrees from medicine through to fashion design, neuroscience. And if you can think of it, we send students off to do it. Uh, we have a really huge improvement this year um, in the number of students who have gone to uh, Russell Group or higher tariff universities. Brilliant aspirations and brilliant achievement from those students. We did have more students than usual take a gap year due to the kind of unusual circumstances this year. Uh, but again, we see, as we see, we have quite a few students who've gone into other education. So things like art foundation to conservatoires to uh, special effects makeup school um, and some students who have gone off into work too. So uh, the students who leave us uh, from Akron Burley and La Swap do go into really diverse and really interesting uh, post 18 uh, careers. Ron. Well, I'm going to pass you over to Ron Stokes because we've kind of talked a bit about 
the way the sixth of the sort of structure of La Swap and the consortium. And now we're going to talk about what happens in each of the four schools. And obviously tonight we're talking about Ackland Burley. Your child will have been allocated a year 12 tutor. And Ron's just going to talk to you about the role of the tutor in the sixth form. Hello, hello again, everyone. Um, many, many years ago, uh, a long time ago now, about 20 years ago, I, I, gave, I gave a similar speech to lower school parents with regards to the role of tutors. And um, I did it alongside, it just so happens, uh, Anna's, Anna's partner, uh, Mr. McCallum. And I remember he spoke about the role of the tutor and he, he spoke about just how important the tutor is in, in Ackland Burley and in, in La Swap. Um, and I spoke about how pleased we are with the co-op this year, and we, we are very, very pleased. But, you know, I would also like to say, and I think I'm echoing uh, the whole of the team's, uh, uh, the, their thoughts, we've got a very, very strong year 12 and year 13 team this year. We're very, very fortunate, very experienced, and really, really willing to, you know, to get involved and um, do their utmost for the best of your, for your, for your child. Um, there's not, not so much contact this year as in normal years because of the, the COVID situation with regards to IM and PM um, registrations, but they, they, that doesn't mean to say that they're not involved and they don't do the monitoring and various jobs that they have to do. They, um, they do get to see um, your, your, your students um, at least once a week, but most of them, they will see them uh, more than that. And I'll come back to period three um, in, 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 in a moment. What I would ask of you, and please bear this in mind, they, they really will have the, the, the best knowledge on, on, on your child. Now, they might not always meet with you because for various reasons, you may, may have contacted uh, Miss Lyons, you may contact Michael or, or Miss Remington, myself and so on, but we will then liaise with them. So they will have the general overview of, of, of your child in their tutor group. So I think it's very, very, very important that you use them as the first point of contact because they will have that, um, that, that knowledge uh, uh, that, that will benefit your child. Um, they, 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 they monitor the, the, the students, they monitor the students how they're doing. So the subject teachers will get in touch with the tutors in the first instance. Um, they will act as mentors for your, for your child and and quite often that uh, they will have regular meetings if they feel a child is not doing so well. Um, they will assist the students in their studies, they, with, you know, mentoring. They will also uh, assist them in thinking about their futures and how to actually attain their goals, um, uh, future pathways and, and, and so on. They're also responsible for the um, personal development program, which is, um, it's compulsory and I'm, and I'm emphasizing that because we, we really will need your support with this. This is a really important period uh, uh, for the students uh, attend for lots of reasons, which I'll, I'll come on to um, in a moment. Um, it's period free, it's, it's on a Monday, and the tutors will deliver the program. So for instance, we might have an assembly on, uh, on one week. We're, we're not having too many assemblies at the moment because of obvious reasons, although we have got one planned for the coming Monday with regards to work experience. Um, they'll pre they're, they're, they've been uh, presenting um, the, a study skills program at the moment. We thought it was very, very important doing a study skills, pro, skills program. Now it's only small. So what we've done is we've done things like um, reading, note taking, writing essays, and later on, we'll be doing, you know, how to revise. We think, we think it's really important because they've spent quite a bit of time out of education. And what we wanted to do is just to remind them and support the subjects uh, in getting across the skills that, that, that are needed. I think that's really, really important because you know, this jump from GCSE has just not been natural for your, uh, for, for, for your child. It's never that natural, is it? That, that jumping in from GCSE to A-level, but they've had such a, such a gap. 
And it's, uh, you know, and it's, we've got to try to encourage them and advise them and teach them how to become proper A-level students. Proper by that sense, it's, there's a lot of independent work, isn't there? There's a lot more trust uh, involved with how they go about their studies uh, from now on. We, we're also going to be deliver, uh, delivering a statutory personal development program, um, which Miss um, uh, Avangiri, she is uh, taking the lead on with the school and I liaise with her. So again, it's important that they go to these particular things. But what's also important um, and is this is the period when we get across lots and lots of important messages. Throughout the year, there'll be one or two students that will say to me, oh, we didn't know about this and we didn't know about that. Well, if they went to the PSHE uh, programs, the personal develop development program, as we now call it, this is when we get across these messages. So please, you know, I was gonna say, encourage your child to come, you know, stipulate to them that they, you know, they have to attend because it is important for them. Um, and as I said, please, please, please use the, um, the, 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 the tutors as your first point of call, because they will be able to uh, deal with lots and lots and lots of your queries. Um, I think Laura now is going to put up a slide with the emails, um, but these, the, the, these can be attained off the website. So if you haven't got time to jot down um, your, 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 your tutor's email contact, your child's tutor's email contact, please uh, look on the website and you'll be able to get that from there. Thanks, Ron. Um, as Thank I said at the bottom, if you need to get in touch with any of the, uh, the staff at Ackland Burley, the most of our emails follow the same uh, structure, the first initial surname, and then everything's the same after the at. But as Ron said, if you're unsure, look on the website or get in touch with one of us and we will be able to put you in touch with that member of staff. The only other thing I would add, just well, before we, uh, oh. Michael talks about attendance, is if you are unsure who your child's tutor is, um, first of all, obviously ask them who their tutor is. It is um, on their timetable. Um, it's also written on their timetable. But if you have any doubts at all about, you just can't work out who their tutor is, please contact either Linda Lyons or Michael and they will get back to you and let you, and let you know. We, I, I absolutely know how sometimes uh, uh, information can sometimes take a bit of long time to filter down so do get in touch if you're having trouble working out who your child's tutor is michael over to you perfect thank you uh, as mentioned earlier a part of my role is actually to monitor attendance and i monitor the attendance with linda uh, lyons who's the attendance officer um, often this year, I find it is paramount that their attendance is crucial for their success this year. Um, therefore, um, I'm, I'm on attendance right now. I'm cracking down on um, any offenders per se. I'm really fair in the sense that I have a three stage process um, and I just want to liaise that with you. Um, firstly, if we find that your child um, is a serial offender of being late or non, uh, non attenders to lessons, I will, my process is to have an informal chat, understand the reasons behind why they're late. If they continue to persist, that's when I will give them a formal warning and it will be logged. And I will also notify parents and guardians of um, this particular issue and hope that we can somehow resolve this. Um, if it continues again, this is when I bring in Mr. Stokes, head of six, to bring parents and carers in, as well as with the child, to have a formal meeting to understand the, the steps taken in order to rectify the issue. Um, with that, where students, uh, I must say that students cannot authorize their own absence. It has to come from a parent or carer. So therefore, if your child is feeling unwell or um, your child has spoken to you throughout the day and they want they wish to come home, you would need to actually call the school, call Miss Lyons or even email Miss Lyons on the number on screen or leave an email in order to for us to authorize their absence. Otherwise, teachers um, and the system itself will actually uh, see as an unauthorized absence in which I will pick up and then follow through with you as well. Great. Thank you, Michael. So uh, after that bit of information about tutors and sort of systems and things, we're just going to talk through another few things that will be really useful uh, for you uh, this evening. Uh, Anna's going to start off by talking a little bit about our, uh, our, our planning and kind of reactions around COVID. And then we're going to move on to talk a little bit more about the actual 
uh, A levels and BTECs, about supercurricula and other things that you can do in terms of supporting students this year. Thank you. Um, the first thing I would say is thank you so much for your really timely and uh, rapid contacting of the school when there have been issues around self-isolating and tests and so on. Um, people have been really responsive um, and it's enabled us to get information out to both students and teachers um, really quickly. So, so many thanks to those of you who have had to call in and report absences. You can imagine um, it, it's quite a complex picture, but you've been making it, you've been really um, great at, at, at communicating with us on those things. Okay, so um, I just wanted to put in a slide about how we're responding as a school um, and changing our some of our procedures um, to uh, in line in, in, in line in line with all of the regulations and um, obviously we're really in, in close contact with Public Health England um, and our school response, um, some of you will know from having siblings lower down the school, um, is laid out on our website and so on. So do have a look if you want to kind of read more detail around those um, our responses there. So the things that we have done um, is there are lots of san health, uh, hand sanitising stations all around the school and that we're encouraging students to bring a sanitizer in with them. We have a hand sanitizer just outside, two of them actually in the sixth form common room. There are new sinks installed all the way around the school and we're encouraging, of course, hand washing um, when students come into school, um, when they're leaving and coming back in um, and obviously at regular points during the day. And we have no share policies and one way systems. Now there is reduced capacity um, in, uh, in our common room um, and what that means is that whereas before students in their study time we would be encouraging them and wanting them to stay in the common room, clearly there is a reduced capacity in the common room um, and actually we're not able to have all of them. It hasn't actually proved too much of a problem so, so far and students are being really sensible and making really sensible decisions. They're using the library and so on. But you will notice compared to previous years that your year, child, your year 12 child is probably studying at home more than they would have been in previous years. Um, and partly actually that's going to be to do with the remote online period five. So if I can just say something about that, your child will have their timetable with them with their lessons and we have one lesson period five after um, after lunch, which starts at 2.05. And um, as a consortium, we took a decision that we would uh, move to an online teaching for period five. Um, there were a few hiccups definitely at the beginning, but actually it's starting to go really, really well with the students. Um, I think there are, I, I'm very interested in parental feedback um, on how those period fives are going from your side, um, because clearly that's something that we're doing all the way across the, um, the consortium. Um, the things that I would like some feedback on is if for whatever reason your child is struggling to access um, with those online lessons, please can you let us know as soon as possible. Now that might be a question of resources, a laptop or so on. It might be something to do with the team set up in different schools. But if basically, if there are hiccups and obstacles um, and issues with stuff going on online period five and the lessons, please can you let us know so that, so that we, we can address them. And that might be, don't, don't think it's too small an issue. It might be to do with passwords. Um, it might be to do with um, the Wi-Fi connection. There are things that we can do to support you with those things. So please, please let us know. Um, the other thing is, um, actually, I'll do this slide now and then we can move back, Laura, that's OK. okay. Um, obviously, we go through with our, with our six formers um, that we're expecting um, a really high standard in our online teaching um, as, as much as we do with face to face. Um, and we're monitoring um, and evaluating our online teaching just as we do with our face to face teaching. Um, and a few staff members are just saying, when well, I just taught a lesson period five um, uh, myself for year 13 English literature, and we're all becoming much, much more skilled. Um, I've had a really good attendance online. We were finishing reading a play and actually as a staff group, we're becoming really um, skilled um, at how to deliver our, on, our online learning. And there's some, there's some real, really great expertise, but it is a new system, isn't it, to get used to. Um, so I'm interested in parental feedback on that and as well as from the students, obviously. Um, what we're doing is we are recording 
um, absences in the same way. So um, don't worry that your child is doing an online lesson. That means we don't know where they are. We do. We just have separate register codes, whether they're face to face or if they're if they're online. Um, and we are chasing up um, attendance to online lessons in exactly the same way as we're chasing up um, attendance to face to face lessons. Laura, could you just go back to the next the last slide? Yeah. Um, the other thing I just wanted to point out is that we are in a, the year 12s and 13s um, are in their own bubble. That means they have their own area of the school, which is in um, the sixth form common room. Um, and that means we're, uh, that they are able to mix in the common room. Um, we are having assemblies with them as well, and we're encouraging them to wear face coverings um, in, in assemblies, because um, obviously we're there for longer than, longer than 15 minutes. Um, the other thing that we're doing is your child, you know, is, is in an age group now it's older, so we are encouraging them to wear face masks around the school and actually our students have been really, um, really compliant when we're giving them a nudge. It isn't a school rule that all students have to, but actually we're encouraging our students to make kind of healthy, sensible choices as mature young adults. So encouraging them to do that around the school is really helpful from your end as well. OK, we're going to move on now to just talk more about the A levels and AS levels, and then we're going to talk about BTEC and applied courses. So um, have a think about the kind of pro programme of study and the pathway that your child is on. Um, we have a real mix in our sixth form. We're a very inclusive sixth form. We have students doing just A levels. We have students doing just applied courses. And then we have quite a big proportion of students as well who do an applied course plus an A-level. We also Excuse have- a reminder to all staff to school be closing at me. seven o'clock. As you can see, we're staying on. So we're here. So the tannoy is just on. Uh, you get a bit of real school life there happening. <laughs> okay, Laura, over to you for A-levels A and AS-levels. Thank you. Uh, so uh, this really is just in case you are not quite sure about the structure of uh, the sixth form in terms of A-levels and applied courses and how they, they differ and how they work together. Uh, this uh, first slide talks about our A-levels. Very few students do AS levels now. They are nearly all A-levels. Uh, the structure for these is 10 taught hours per fortnight. These are mainly in school, but as Anna's just discussed, some of those are now remote. Um, and these are now assessed mainly by exams at the end of year 13. They are linear courses. And the non-examined assessment, where it exists, because not all A-levels have non-exam non assessment, is no more than 20% of the final grades. Um, this is why we have, or one of the main reasons that we have higher stakes exams towards the end of year 12, uh, because there are no formal exams, sort of ex external exams in year 12, the HSEs give us the opportunity to assess students in the middle of their course. Uh, they are marked and set and marked across the whole of the swap, and they are the gateway between year 12 and year 13. Um, those HSEs will be graded just like the final A-levels. The grading runs from A star down to E. There is also a U grade for ungraded. And for the final A level itself, if the student is sitting a science A level, so biology, chemistry, or physics, they will also have a practical element which has to be passed, but this is marked as a as a as a pass or or not. Um, so the main takeaway I think from A levels is the uh, weight of the exams and the linear structure of them. This can be quite different, or this is quite different in our vocational courses. So we do two different vocational courses. One is the BTEC Diploma. It's sometimes called the BTEC Double because it has the same number of UCAS points as two A-levels. Um, and we also have run the Cambridge Technical for Digital Media, which is very, very similar to a BTEC course. It's just a different exam board. And again, it's worth the same number of UCAS points as two A-levels. Um, it has roughly the same amount of teaching time, again, as two A-levels, um, and assessment-wise, it's a mixture of examined units and coursework, but the key difference here is that they're spread across the two years, across year 12 and year 13, rather than being linear and at the end of year 13. Our BTEC students don't always sit a HSE because sometimes they have external modules around the same time as a HSE, and if that happens, obviously they will take uh, precedence over the HSE. And BTECs and Cambridge Technicals are also graded slightly differently. They're graded from a distinction star down to a pass. 
Uh, but as we say, they are the equivalent of two A-levels in terms of UCAS points. Uh, you will find that some of our students as well do something uh, that they may call an applied A-level. This is a uh, again, a vocational version of the qualification, so apply business, for example, and that is worth the same number of UCAS points as one A-level, not the same as the BTEC. If you do ever have any questions about BTECs, Cambridge Technicals, UCAS points, A-levels, how they add together, what they're worth, all those kind of things, please don't hesitate to drop me an email and I'm happy to, to talk that through with you at any time. Just to give you a quick summary of UCAS points, if you're not familiar, because I know we tend to throw around these kind of terms without always explaining them. All level three qualifications, so anything that is the equivalent to an A level, so that includes our vocational qualifications, it includes our EPQ, these are all worth UCAS points. And um, this is the tariff that's set by universities that allows students to access different courses. So for example, a university may ask, say that a student needs three B grades, which is 120 UCAS points in order to qualify for a particular course. Universities can ask for anything from 48 up to 148 UCAS points. Um, and so students will, it's one way of helping students to find which courses are best suited for them. The A-levels themselves individually are worth up to 56 UCAS points, which is what an A-star is worth. Um, the BTEC or Cambridge Tech is 112 exactly the same as two A-levels, and the EPQ is worth up to 28 points at an A-star if, uh, if students are doing an EPQ. Anna, thank you. Oh, you're still muted, Anna. <laughs> I was answering <laughs> something in the chat. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to talk to you about our reporting systems and when you are going to um, hear from us. I mean, you've heard from us um, already a couple of times um, this term, just with some key dates and so on. Um, I just want to make sure that you've all got the letter that has come out that's got some key dates. And if anyone didn't get this letter, do email um, Miss Lyons. It was a letter to all year 12 parents um, from the swap. It's got some key dates and so on in it. Um, in terms of reporting home, um, the most important thing for you to know um, coming up soon is that at the moment, what all subject teachers and tutors are doing is they are um, entering induction data. Now, what we do at this point with year 12 is teachers are asked to make a judgment about um, the students punctuality, um, their attendance to lessons, their contributions in class and whether they are sort of course ready, uh, whether they're course ready and completely hit the ground running and they're doing everything they need to be doing in terms of independent study and so on, or are they course ready with intervention um, uh, or are they a serious cause for concern? Um, I think there are gonna be very few of those students. And we are going to be sending um, those initial reports home on the 19th of October. And that's data that's collected um, all the way across the swap. So if your child does the subject in another, in another school, that means that you'll get obviously the data from that school as well. Now, what we don't do at this point, because we've obviously only just um, uh, started teaching um, the students, we're not sending out um, at this point any kind of predicted grades. The first time that you will get an iteration around an idea around predicted grades and kind of working at grades, we call them progress grades, is in the early part of next year. And that's the next time that we will report to you. And that's after the December assessment, which we're going to go on and talk about. So, so far, your child will have done their enrollment assignment, which, your, which the subject teachers will have um, assessed and given feedback on. And they will also have done what we call induction assignment, which is kind of a first smaller piece of work um, that will be used and that feeds into this the, the induction review. Now, um, I know um, I had a query earlier on today about assessments and the way that they are kind of tracked and the way that you will find out about them. What we do is we have kind of long-term plans and long-term assessment plans. They are subject by subject. Um, and your child absolutely should have at the front of their folder, a kind of long-term plan that goes through when the assessments are and the kind of key pieces of work for, for each of the subjects that they study. Um, 
if for whatever reason you you can't quite put your hands on that or your child can't do get in contact with the with the subject teachers um, and don't don't be shy about asking for those long term plans it's really important that you know you know where your child's heading and those are those key assessment points and what the assessments will be will be based on. Um, but the first set of actual exams assessments coming up they are going to be in December and we'll go through the dates with you um, for those uh, in a, a couple of slides. Now, um, if you can just go back one bit, Laura, um, I just wanted to mention the end of um, year 12 reviews. Now, you've got mentioned there the HSEs, the high stakes exams. Um, what we do at the swap is um, we don't put all of the A-level students in for um, AS levels. That's a consortium decision that we took a number of years ago. We instead have our own internal exam system called high stakes exams. And the high stakes exams um, will happen at the very end of April next year. So if we go on to the next slide, Laura. OK, so there are dates coming up here for um, assessments. Don't worry, I've, I, that's what I was typing frantically in the chat there, that I'm not sure I managed to finish my message, that um, all, this whole presentation will be available on the Sixth Form YouTube channel, and we will also make the PowerPoint available on the website. So don't worry about frantically scribbling down loads of dates and so on. So you've got there the Year 12 mock exams date, um, the assessment week in February, and then the high stakes exams, which are the 26th to the 30th of April next year. Um, after any assessment point, and when we enter our data as teachers, what happens is the data is all sent back to us. So we have all of it for our base students. And then from those reports, the tutors run a progress review with each of their tutees when they go through the data from all of their subjects and do sort of an academic mentoring session really and a review session. So they're looking at each of the subjects and looking at what's going well, what targets are, what they need to improve on and so on. Now, I will just mention around BTECs and CTECs, a number of you will be um, have children who are doing BTEX and CTEX. So that will be performing arts. If your child studies performing arts or applied science, BTEC art or CTEC digital media. The thing to say about CTEX and BTEX is that actually assessment runs at a slightly different calendar to a slightly different calendar. And actually those um, vocational students really need to hit the ground running because assessments happen all the way through the two years. So it's really important, and we can't really give you the dates for those just because they're different from subject to subject. Um, but again, if you have any difficulties at all getting in touch with them, do contact the head of faculty, um, when teachers will give them out the dates for the assessments that are coming up because there is kind of considerable variety in when, the, in when those assessments are. But it's really important that um, vocational students really do understand that actually their assessment starts from year 12 proper assessment that counts towards final, final grades. Okay, Thank next you. slide please. So um, I just wanted to talk to you really quite briefly about uh, really learning outside the classroom and students taking their uh, knowledge beyond uh, the walls of the classroom and beyond the kind of our structure of the lesson. Uh, because what is, you know, we've, we, we, we all have heard people talk about extracurricular, the importance of extracurricular activities all through secondary school. But really what you hear as we start to come into sixth form is more emphasis on super curricular. Um, I'm also the EPQ coordinator for Ackland Burley. And so this is something that um, really I come across time and time again, the emphasis from universities or FE colleges or even employers around apprenticeships uh, wanting evidence that students are independent enough uh, and interested enough to go beyond what they're immediately learning in the classroom into wider areas. So as well as talking about extracurricular, you will hear a lot of supercurricular now. You'll hear people, you're here talking about self-directed academic activity that enhances understanding of a subject. So 
these kind of things you will hear as I say we start to talk about through year 12 and the things that become really key when students start to write personal statements or start to consider uh, which universities they will go to to. And supercurricular activities are things like reading beyond a syllabus, um, being confident enough and engaged enough to ask a teacher for recommendations in an area of the syllabus that they're particularly interested in. Um, it's not just reading, though. I think people kind of get bogged down in supercurricular and they get a bit worried and they think, oh, I've got to be reading, you know, three books a fortnight or I'm not doing it properly. It's really not. It is also things like listening to podcasts that might be subject related or led by experts. It might be watching TED Talks or documentaries or online lectures through things like Gresham College. Um, it might be joining a society or a club dedicated to your subject. That can also be online. It doesn't have to be something that you physically go to. It can just be engaging with um, an online society around something that you that interests you. Um, it can be entering competitions such as essay competitions, universities and, uh, you, and institutions, charities and places such as Sutton Trust run lots of these kind of competitions. And also from the beginning of year 12, I can't recommend this enough, engaging with content from universities. So universities are now one of you know, one of the good things I suppose about the move to online learning this year is that we now have access to so much more content so much more easily um, and so much more readily and universities are generating so much interesting stuff so many webinars on subjects or on subject areas uh, they are because we, they, a lot of them haven't been able to do open days or physical summer schools they've moved a lot of that online now they're offering student mentors there are lots of ways that students can get involved with learning and, and, and academics on that higher level, that kind of thinking outside the classroom level. Um, we will, we're not starting any formal preparation for, uh, univ for university applications or apprenticeship applications until uh, into the next term, but it's really worth thinking about now and for students to think about now. Uh, myself and uh, Ms. Ogan Larby are going to be starting some activities based around supercurricular activities and getting more students uh, involved after half term um, and it'd be really fantastic if we could get some if we could get encouragement from home for students to use their time to do that too Laura, right. we just had something coming up in the chat before uh, michael talks about sure. work experience and um uh, a parent made a really good point hmm. about epq yeah um and what a good point it was um, how helpful it was do you want to say just something briefly about epq of course i probably should have put something probably should have put something in <laughs> um so an epq is an extended project qualification it is uh equivalent to slightly more than an as worth of ucas points and it's essentially a research portfolio with a project at the end that you do that a student does over about 18 months they start at the beginning of year 12 we start with taught sessions about um, it literacy about research skills about referencing about bibliographies about planning and then it moves into a much more independent uh project led by uh, a teacher myself in a supervisory role and students can do epqs on pretty much anything. Um, again, last year we had them on uh, the role of technology in diabetes, we, in treating diabetes, we had them on Niger the economy in Nigeria, we had them on special effects makeup, we had a TED talk on um, uh, the use of smartphones and the changing use of smartphones across generations. Um, if there is a topic you can think of, uh, we have probably had an EPQ on it, or a student can do an EPQ on it. It has to be something that they are really, really engaged with. Now, EPQs have started this academic year, but if there are any students who haven't done one and want a really structured way to get some uh, supercurricular and extra learning into their curriculum, then an EPQ is a really good way for them to do that. It's not too late for them to join up if they want to join up. Um, they can get some more information by emailing me um, and they're more than welcome to, uh, as I say, to, to email me. I could send them some uh, examples some you know, we can talk through some suggestions. And if it's something they're interested in, then I'm more than happy for them to join. Universities really do like them because they show independence and research skills and referencing skills and all these kind of things that you can only get by 
taking on a big project yourself. And they do occasionally lead to contextual or reduced offers from universities too. So they have a, a very practical use um, as well as just all that underst increasing understanding um, and increasing you know, subject knowledge. Uh, Michael, thank you. Oh, sure. <laughs> thank, thank you, you. Laura. Um, this academic year, there is a, an expectation for year 12 students to find a work placement, whether it be in person or in the current situation, a virtual one will do as well. Um, the reason behind this is that we find that it's, ex it's an excellent way to, to prep our students in, in a sense to become young, independent adults. Um, we find that it builds confidence, it builds communication skills, it builds time management, and it really gives them an, a, a boost in, in a sense and give a real taste of what real world life is like. Um, we like our students to actually find placements themselves, um, to go from the whole process of researching as if they would if they left for university, let's say, finish university and searching for a role. Um, so we're, we're, giving, we're preparing them for the real world. And uh, the key dates for you, which will be included, um, will be the A-level students that are taking A-levels will be from the 4th to the 7th of May, whereas those that are taking BTEC will be the 21st to the 25th of June. Um, it's also worth to note that any students that are doing a BTEC and the A-level, we would recommend taking it in between the 21st to the 25th of June, simply due to we, we wouldn't want them to clash with their, their current exams. Um, but once again, any questions at all, please do not hesitate to uh, a member of the Sixth Form team and we'll be happy to help. Thank you. <laughs> Anna. Yeah, we, had, we had some absolutely fantastic, um, what, during lockdowns, uh, our current year 13s going off and uh, doing virtual work experiences. Um, and, and they did all sorts, they had a really positive experience. So um, I think let's let's see what's what what position we're in um, in the spring summer mm. next next year um but they'll either be online or or, or um face to face obviously but we give the your your child lots of help about finding we've got a board outside in the uh, sixth form common room with so lots of really exciting placements that come up okay so i'm just going to talk to you about um strategies that you can use and ways that you can help your child make the transition into the sixth form as, Ro as ron said earlier on it's always a big move it's always a, a moment of big transition isn't it um going from year 11 into year 12 and we really understand that this is going to be potentially even harder um for your child um the first thing that I would say is, of course, talk to them about the subjects they're doing. It's really, really important to us that they are on a course that they feel happy with, that they feel they know where they're going with it. And actually, please communicate with us as much as you possibly can. Um, if there are things, however petty they might seem, or uh, please get in contact with us um, because those things can really make a big difference to your child's experience. Um, of course, encourage full attendance. Um, we've talked about attendance, but that's the in-person attendance, being there for online lessons and for personal development, Monday period three. Um, you will get texts and so on um, if your child is missing a lesson and we follow up, of course, on attendance, as we mentioned. Um, but really important that they're doing a full day's work. Um, and even if they're not in school for all of their lessons, that they are getting into good, positive learning habits as early as they can. We will really do that for help them with that, as, as Ron was talking about in personal development time and work on study skills and so on. Mr. Lou Michael is, is already really getting stuck into the students in terms of giving them pep talks and on, um, an academic mentoring and I was with a student earlier on before this meeting, going through that student's work plan with them and setting targets. So there's lots of us looking out for them, but it's really great to know we've got your, your support at home as well. Um, you know, those, those skills of organization, they really need to be taught explicitly, don't they? Um, you know, your, your, your child, they don't necessarily know how to organize a folder. I, I didn't know how to organize a folder. I think Mr. Stokes would still say, my desk is very messy and I don't know how to organize it. But um, it, you know, I, you, need to, you, you need to be taught those things, don't you? Um, and actually it's, it's, not, it's, it's not patronizing to do that with somebody in year 12. It can be nice to go to Ryman's or WH Smith or buy loads of stuff online and get some nice, post-its and so on so sometimes the physical stuff you know i'm talking as a parent of teenagers as well 
do, doing a bit of buying and giving them some physical things that, that can lead into a conversation about work. Um, do help them with the organisation, encourage those super curricular enrichment activities, but also don't worry that your child doesn't know what they want to do at the moment. I would say in any time in year 12 that they often don't know where they're going to be going and wanting, and wanting to go for university, but now of all times, there might be a bit of a kind of fog around those things. Don't worry about those things. Um, they've got plenty of time to make their minds up um, and we will help them with those things as well. Um, I'd really encourage you to sign up to UCAS as a parent. There's a particular parent, um, Laura's going to show you in a second, but there's a particular parent portal that you can all log into. And it's really gold dust um, in, in terms of keeping on track of timelines. Don't panic. We're saying this now. You don't need to um, be aware of anything straight away, but it's never too early to start thinking about um, about future pathways. And actually, in my conversations um, with the year 12s recently, when they've been talking about coming to me with course changes and so on, my first question is, what do you thinking? What are you thinking about doing longer term in terms of your career or what you think what are you thinking about university? Because actually starting at that point really kind of helps focus the discussion, I find. Do keep a copy of their timetable, um, you know, bang it on the fridge. I know that that sounds, um, again, it's just really good to have it up there somewhere obvious where you know and they know where it is. Um, again, if you have any issues and can't find their timetable, do email Miss Lyons, um, Linda Lyons, and she'll send you a copy of their timetable. And keep up communication with us um, via email, you can phone us and so on. Please, please do that. Um, we also have a fantastic family bulletin um, at Ackland Burley um, and the all of the family bulletins are available on the website um, and you can go back and check. There's a key stage five section in there every week that is written usually by Laura, but um, off, I'll put things in it as well or, or Michael or Ron. Um, and they are a real mine of in information. Um, they get emailed out every um uh, every Friday, but they're, and they're available on the website. Um, so again, if you have any problems navigating the website and can't find where they are and want to have a look back at the key stage five, do, do just let us know. And I would say as well, help your child to kind of plan their work-life balance and maintain a kind of positive mental health. Um, really important at the moment, isn't it, for, for, for all of us, but um, actually there's a lot of change going on for them and a lot of uncertainty, and I think the uncertainty from talking to students is something that actually they're finding quite difficult. There's a lot of change and then a lot of things that they can't quite see their way through, totally understandably. Um, we are always here to listen to them and talk to them. Mr. Lou is a fantastic person to go and talk to just because he's often there, whereas Ron and I are teaching um, and we have less availability for those reasons. But Mr. Lou, they all know who he is and where he is. He's really approachable. Laura as well works four days a week. Um, students can phone her, um, they can email her. She's been, she will set up Zoom sessions, um, team sessions with students and have consultations, particularly about higher pathways and has already been doing that with some of our year 12 students who needed some, some, some guidance. So please make the most of us and draw on us as a, as a resource. Um, we do have, we don't have a school counsellor, but we do have staff members who are trained mental health first aiders. Um, and we, um, we have a place called Place to Talk, which kind of is linked to Place to Be that some of you might know that work in um, secondary schools and primary schools. And that's a lunchtime facility, which is staffed by one of our members of staff. And it's a safe space for students to go to and talk about absolutely anything. Um, and uh, it's just somewhere that might be a useful place for them to know about. We do tell them about it. But again, it's somewhere that if you're having one of those conversations that you're you know, thinking, oh, I just don't know where I should tell them to go in school, obviously us, but there's also a place to talk as well. Um, the other things that I would just point out there would be about just making sure that the tutors, if you've got any concerns, do um, find out who your child's tutor is um, and get set up a dialogue with them about any particular concerns there. As Ron said, they're a fantastically skilled group of um, very experienced tutors, um, and I would really encourage you to draw on them as well. Um, the other thing I'd say though really is that we're just delighted to have all the students back in school. Um, 
they seem to be making really good friends um, and mixing really well. We have a, um, a cohort in year 12 that is slightly more um, students who weren't here in Ackland Burley before in year, year 11. We've got more we call external applicants who came from non um, uh, La Swap schools. And actually, they're so friendly. I, I did a poll. I do a poll in the first two weeks where I stand on the gate when I'm on lunch duty and say, did you two know each other before you came here? Do you two know each other? Did you go to the same school? And they're saying, no, no, we've just met each other. So your child's, they are making friends. They are being, they are really being positive around the place. Um, and we're delighted to have, to have them back in school. And we hope they are delighted to be back in school and that it's providing a bit of structure um, for them. Okay, should we go on to the next few slides, Laura? Yep, uh, we are just about done. Um, I just want to really uh, uh, just uh, repeat what Anna just said about signing up to UCAS um, advice for parents and guardians. There's a UCAS kind of hub uh, with uh, with advice for parents and guardians, but there's also a page that you can sign up and they will send you alerts. At this stage, they won't send you very much at all. Uh, because it's still quite early. As the moves through the UCAS process, they will send you more. UCAS is now a really good repository of information, not just about undergraduate degrees, but also about uh, foundation degrees and foundation years, and um, increasingly about apprenticeships too. Uh, so it is just a good place to be signed up to, to know that you're in the loop and you're going to get that information and that uh, they will keep you up to date with when the deadlines are, uh, because they do come around quite surprisingly quickly. Um, and just again to, to reiterate uh, what Anna said there, if any students are uncertain in they shouldn't be worrying now about what they're going to do at university. It shouldn't be, they certainly shouldn't be panicking. But if anyone does want to have a conversation, especially around how do I prepare for this? Is there something I can do? Uh, often the case with students who want to do veterinary or medicine or things that have an earlier entry point or have assessments to, to get into. Um, now in year 12 is the point that they really want to be uh, sort of thinking about that timeline. So if that applies, please do ask uh, students to, to get in touch with me. Um, and finally, just a couple of ways that you can keep in touch or you can find out more. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel. It does tend to be dominated with UCAS stuff. Um, at the minute, most of the things on there are how to fill in a UCAS application and kind of talking through that. Um, but this presentation and some more things will go up there. Uh, the link to the website's already been there. There's a six form section of the website, which, as Anna said, has all our lots of information in plus the uh, key stage five section of the family bulletin i use that to uh keep you updated on things to do with your pathways and post 18 or of course you can email us and just a reminder there of our email addresses and our contact numbers although as we said earlier uh, this presentation will be on the website so you don't need to write them down so what we're going to do now, thank you, Laura, is we're going to keep this slide up um, just for um, a few minutes. Um, that's the end of the kind of official presentation. Um, but I'm really happy to um, stay online if anyone's got any questions. What I would ask is if you've got um, uh, specific questions about your child and specific kind of problems that you need us to address, if you wouldn't mind just emailing um, whoever you think is the uh, right person. Obviously, that can come just to me or whoever. But if you if it's specific to your child and then but if you've got some more sort of general questions, then do feel free either to put them in the chat or, or if you want to raise your hand and we can unmute you. Um, me, Ron, Laura, Michael will we'll stay on um, online for uh, as long as you want, really. Um, and then, um, well, before they kick us out with another with another Tanoi anyway. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions at all. If you're happy with what you've heard and you don't feel you need any more clarification then feel free to leave it's great to see so many of you um thank you so much for uh giving us your time tonight thank you i'm going to look in the chat and see if there's any pictures equally if you're if you're feeling a bit shy and you want to say um anything in the chat and you'd rather do that that's absolutely fine um we have yeah, we have got someone with a hand up. Uh, so the, your name's going to be Stephen Hagen. Um, oh yeah, it's Max's mum. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to chip in here, not because, uh, well, yeah, well, for, for whatever reason. 
um, you talked about the EPQ, um, and I heard about the EPQ because of my elder daughter, and I didn't realize uh, what it was. She was like, oh, it's a project, and yada, 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 and I was like, yeah, cool, project, yada, yada, yada. Um, and my daughter's older, obviously my son Max is now in with you guys. Um, what I didn't realize was how important it was for her when her A-level results were in flux. Mm. And there was a period there when were, her levels were, her A-levels were in flux. And this was a pro, she got an A star in her EPQ. Wow. And I think anyone who is studying something they're interested in, will do well in it because you choose the EPQ. Um, so as a, sorry, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm chipping in here as a parent who's gone through it because we're all, when, when you don't know it, you're learning and you're like, yeah, 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 whatever, yeah, do your project, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> but um, in hindsight, I wish I'd known the impact it could possibly have on her. So she did her APQ in criminology, didn't get the results to get into her criminology course that she'd applied for but as a result of her epq was offered a place that's fantastic and thank I you very much now they're preparing to may or may not know what that is no it's really really good to hear that because we do i because i i have an oversight of all of the kind of ucas process what i see is that you will often get students who have an EPQ who do get a contextual offer. So it would be, they would normally ask for three A's, but because they're doing an EPQ, they will ask for something slightly lower. And in that case where you've got a student doing something really specific that's linked to the university course they want to pursue, it can be even more useful. Uh, unis do really, really appreciate them because of the independent learning skills that they, that, that you have to have to do, to do well in an EPQ. I guess, especially in this environment where no one knows what is happening. So um, uh, she missed, she missed the, the, when they, when they awarded her the grades that she should have got, that she mm -hmm. didn't get them, yada, 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 but whatever. So she got in on that. And I, I just think it's really, I think it's fascinating for kids to learn uh, rather than turning up at school and learning what you have to learn is to figure out what you want to learn and learn that. I also mm -hmm. think it's a really great thing, but I'll, I'll just from my experience. No, it's brilliant to hear that. I'm really, um, thank you very much for kind of highlighting that. It is, as you say, a great thing for them to do. Whatever you are interested in, really, you can, we can find a way through for an EPQ for you. Um, it has, it has, to, it's an academic project. It has to be an academically based, research-based project, but you really can, as it, whatever your interest is, we will make it work and it's such a good way to not only learn a load more stuff find out a load more things learn how to research etc cetera, etc cetera, uh, but also just enjoy sort of yeah, and also learning about something on that in that depth one pop a grade yep and, and as i said to my daughter just stack the deck stack the deck why wouldn't you yeah thank you If anyone's got any other questions, do feel free to put them in the chat as well. Um, and we'll, I think, um, you know, you were, you were referring there um, to kind of the uncertainty and, uh, you know, we haven't sort of addressed the, the, the big elephant in the room, which is all the uncertainty. And I think we'll probably know a bit more. It's not directly going to affect your, your ch ch uh, children with the exams, but um, we're going to know a bit more in a few weeks time around assessments and the, and the landscape there for year 13. Um, and any potential knock on for year 12 in terms of dates and so on. But we'll um, communicate with you about that. Yeah, of course, we don't have any more information than anyone else about universities and things at this stage, but we will pass on anything that we do know. And all I can say is if you if, if you have got children who are worried or uncertain about university, then I will do my best to reassure them or tell them what I do know. <laughs> Although my daughter's uh, in lockdown in Manchester currently, and I uh, said to me, Mum, I'd rather be locked down in Manchester for two weeks with my new friends than be locked down in London for six months with my, uh, my parents. You know? Okay, I think that looks like we've the chat, there are no more. I'm just going to double check the chat. Yep, I think we're fine. No one's put anything else in that. Like I said, please, please follow up anything you want to with whoever 
seems the most appropriate person on that list. Um, and we will, of course, get back to you. Um, but many, many thanks, everybody, for Thank uh, giving us Thank your time, to time tonight. Thanks so bye. much, everybody. Bye-bye. Have, Have a good evening, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.